Some people were curious how I got a Chevy motor to work in a big old front end loader. Well, I'll give you some technical details now. Actually, wasn't that difficult. So, I made a couple custom motor mounts out of just some channel iron, four inch by one inch. I mean an inch and a half. And you can see I welded it on. And here I didn't weld because that's the cast iron counterweight. You can't do a good job welding steel to cast iron. And then before I dropped the motor in, I had to smash the oil pan down just a little bit to give me a tiny bit of clearance and then I coated it with grease so it wouldn't rust. Waterproof grease. I had to do that so the motor would be in line with the big hydraulic pump that it drives. I didn't have any length to work with to pull the motor and tilt it. It was just too close so I had to keep it in line. That's the old motor mounts for the three-cylinder two-stroke supercharged Detroit diesel. Had to mount the fan over there because of course if you're operating a loader in bush or rough terrain you could just back up and bump into something and destroy your radiator so I had to put it in a safe place and I actually do have the cover for this thing. Just been too lazy to put it back on. It doesn't look special but it's the right one for the machine. I think I'll put it on this year. So I just extended the coolant tube to run it to the radiator. That's just a piece of copper pipe in the middle. Got the fan set up to run all the time. This motor has a two barrel carburetor. It actually needs the jets opened up a bit since I'm running it with open exhaust manifolds and it's a bit lean. It works good other than that. And I used the stock transmission with it, one of those crappy Metrix transmissions. The output ratio of any pretty much any automatic transmission is one to one. So that would have been similar that if I would have made a longer drive shaft, connected it straight to the flywheel. But then I would have had the machine an adapter plate, put a standard flywheel on that's cast iron, because you can't use a sheet metal flywheel like it's made for a torque converter with an engine. They've got to have some sort of flywheel. So looking at the side machine is a lever with a handle, long bar and it goes down and it shifts the transmission from neutral to drive two and one. I left out park and reverse uh, because that would spin my great big hydraulic pump the wrong way. So the original system had that big U-joint on it and this drive plate that bolted to the flywheel of the old diesel engine. So what I did was just took the yoke and everything off the Chevy engine still original, cut the drive shaft really short and instead of just running a radial weld all the way around I cut two notches, one on each side where it couples onto here and then put a weld like that and that too. If you get a radial weld it's a possibility it could fracture in the future. Doing this that little bit extra makes a high torque weld much stronger on a rotating shaft. There you can see the cooling fan set up. There's a little cooler that's factory with the machine or stock that cools the hydraulic oil. Now this old loader is hydrostatic drive. That means there is no transmission. The big hydraulic pump runs a hydraulic motor which spins the wheels and a differential in the front and the rear. Fortunately when I got this machine I didn't know that there was no gears in the rear differential. So it only has gears in the front, so it's only front wheel drive now. Too bad. Now looking in the cab, this machine used to have a typical old fashioned worm gear power steering box like most big old rear wheel drive cars have. Well it was so worn out it had one and a half turns each direction. Play! This thing was ridiculous to drive, it would either start going that way or that way. I needed to do one and a half turns either way just to correct it. So now it has a Cavalier tilt steering column, 1991, and a Cavalier steering rack in it, which doesn't really need a lot of power to make it work because the steering rack only operates two valves, which turns the hydraulic steering right or left. And the old seat was also weathered and worn, all the horsehair was coming out of it, so it's got a Cavalier seat to boot also. Now we're looking at the front end just above the windshield and there's the original gas tank. It can't use it anymore because the bottom side rusted out and so it just leaks gas on the ground. This lever does forward and reverse 
and neutral in the middle. Those two levers, one is lift and up and down, which means up and down, and the other one is tilt. And a gas pedal. Of course you want a gas pedal so you can go faster or slower. And pump it to start it. And a brake pedal, which is totally non-functional now because the master cylinder is totally worn out. So I just use forward and reverse for brakes. That's redneck simple enough. Back in the good old days, when it used to have all the windows in it, it used this little heater with a fan underneath of it to cool, I mean to warm the cab. It even used to have emergency brake one time. Haha, <laughs> that doesn't work for years. Now this machine has forks on it now, but way back when it used to have a bucket on it. This machine has rear wheel steering only. That's not near as good as the ones that are split in the middle nowadays. But 15 years ago, I only paid $3,000 for it in working condition. So what's the big deal? It's good enough for me, good enough for Dave's farm. The original engine just had bad compression after several years of use at the farm and a bad head gasket. I assume that because the oil was full of antifreeze. So since this method was a free conversion and this engine was rebuilt with only 30,000 kilometers, what could be cheaper than free? That's why I chose to use it. It actually doesn't go any faster. I thought for sure with a car engine that runs at a much higher RPM than a diesel it would go faster. It still doesn't. It's way too slow. But good enough when you got no brakes.